people now that that's how she really feels. Or I know that, you know, Oh, she- yeah, don't say anything crazy because then he's like, oh, that's how you feel. And then that's like, it could be something in the heat of the moment. But then... Hey guys, and welcome back to Little Blair Book. You know what time it is. Talking to you guys about Black Love Season 4, dealing with Bill and Kristen, um, and talking about their relationship in Episode 4, Expectations versus Reality. Guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for a notification of the uploads. We appreciate you. Stay locked and stay loaded. All right, guys, if you're returning as well, you got the minerals. You got the minerals. All right, cool. Let's get into the video. So, watching, um, again, episode four, and another couple was on there, Bill and Christian. Uh, they were on another episode earlier on as well. I found them very interesting on this particular episode because um, of their differences in approach to arguments. I think with Bill and Christian, I can you can see even when they're even talking on the screen, there is a clear difference of demeanor um, when they approach the questions that are being asked. Both very lively, bubbly, chatty kind of people. But what's really interesting is when Bill, it, when, when Christian is talking, Bill actually doesn't spend a lot of time looking at her. That's how you feel. And then that's like, it could be something in the heat of the moment, but then- as they're talking. See, a lot of other couples, you can see that there's a trained eye on the other individual who's talking as a way to show that I'm listening to you. But their form of listening, I'm not going to say they're not listening, I'm going to say that their form of listening is that when Christian is talking, Bill looks elsewhere. I don't know what he's thinking about, what he's looking at, but he's thinking about something else. It looks like he's thinking about something else. We're not sure 100%, we just know that he's looking elsewhere. And when Bill begins to talk, Christian also doesn't look at him in the eye either. Or if it's a disagreement, because like, okay, all right, I know now that that's how she really feels. Or and it's really odd, um, because obviously normally you see couples look at each other or at least look at the camera, but actually none of them are looking at the camera. They're looking in this direction at something else completely. Now, I'm not saying they're not listening to each other. I'm saying that they have a different way of operating. Um, I'm not exactly 100% sure as to why they do that. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say they have a lack of intimacy. Um, because I'm not, I, I can't say that 100%. I mean, if you look at the way they are comfortable in each other's presence, there must be some level of physical intimacy there. Not Maybe not sexual, but there's definitely a lot of physical intimacy there. They're comfortable in each other's presence. Nobody's running from the other person. I think what is interesting, though, is the fact that, um, uh, is the way that they, um, is the way that, uh, Bill, you know, really supplants energy and vibrancy in his answers. Whenever he's answering a question, you feel energy beginning to rise. Um, whenever I hear Kristen, uh, Kristen begin to answer questions, I'm feeling like my blood pressure is going to go up a little bit. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if you feel it as well. But it's just a little bit of... Uh, not. Uh, she's ready to go. She's, she's ready to go. That's what I'm going to say. Like, it's, <clears throat> it's not necessarily a bad thing. She's just ready to go. Like, if you try and test her and cross her waters, she's ready to go. I can cuss you out and then let's go to the movies. Because I'm done and I said it and I've mm -hmm. got it all out. Right. And so then we can go to the movies. But then he's like, I can't go to the movies with you. because Right? Um, and that's where we're going to kind of start off our, our conversation with Kristen and Bell. Um, I think Bill made a really great point saying that not many people want to be able to work through their problems. I think... Something that I'm beginning to really learn in relationships is how to really work out problems. You've got to be a problem solver, not a problem bringer. What does that mean? It means that you need to learn to get into the mindset of solving issues within your relationship. You cannot be a person who just consistently brings problems forward without bringing solutions forward. There's a necessity to be able to uh, decipher and break down certain issues that happen in your relationship. And you should be able to be ready to listen and to learn, all right? And we're going to deal with the listening part because Bill made a very good point, which I believe that there's, a, there's an issue between himself and Kristen in the way that she does certain things within their context of a relationship. But he was, he was basically saying that how you argue is very important. And, and, and you how know, you listen. You know. Um, she mentioned that, it's, um, that, you know, when she's in an argument with her, she can cuss out and then be free and done with it. I can cuss you out and then let's go to the movies. Because I'm done and I said it and I've got it all out. Right? Um, and I, I, t I, tend to, I tend to always feel a little bit some way about people who have to cuss or insult um, and, and launch any kind of verbal tirade 
in order to feel I've done my job today, I'm good to go. Like I've got it off my chest. And the reason why I say that is because in that tirade of when you're angry, the Bible says that though our words, our tongue is like poison. Today it doesn't kill. Tomorrow it does. And so whenever people go, are, are comfortable with their, their tongue being very loose, the Bible says be, be slow to speak. When we're loose with our tongues, um, you know, as much as it might help you that you've, you know, you've launched everything off your chest. But as she went on to say, Bill is a type that will remember what you said and say, oh, so this is how you truly feel. Right. And so then we can go to the movies. But then he's like, I can't go to the movies with you because you just cuss me out. Right. And so when you say something, you can't undo it. This is why you have to be very, very careful how you articulate yourself. Be slow to speak. I think many of us um, can very much agree that, you know, um, the, the, the sentiment of that sentiment that we use, a phrase that we use, which is um, you have two ears and one mouth is very much evident in a relationship. You need to be able to exercise both of these as mo far more than you need to exercise this, because oftentimes the arguments that happen. And if you watch my video, we've done about the video about this. The arguments happen when people are no longer listening. When they are listening to respond or when they want to hit you with a quick fire shot because they've got bars ready for you, you're no longer listening. And then an argument ensues because one person feels like they're not being adhered to. All right. Um, so I, I, I hear that, 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 that you know, to, to kind of let someone know that, you know, you have to kind of give them a bit or to make yourself feel a bit better. You have to fire them. I hear that, but I, I don't think it's a conducive method. Not only that. You know, if you're, you know, as she want to say, like, she can fire and then she can go to the cinema after, whereas he can't do that. Why can't he do that? Because the words affect him. The movie's with you because you just cuss me out. Right? And, and secondly, as well, here's my thing, which is that if your boss spoke to you that way, would you be able to have a, a consistent relationship with that boss person? You wouldn't. Why do we think as partners we can get away with certain behaviours? You know, we, we wouldn't find it acceptable to shoot our mouth off at our boss and insult them, no matter how we felt, right? And it's the same kind of level of respect that we should bring to relationship. I don't think we should think it's normal to uh, to to, uh, to allow that behavior. But who am I? I haven't been married. To, I haven't been married eighteen. Different. Like he, as you can tell, is a communicator. Just like he, like wants to just communicate, communicate, communicate. Till you just want to smother him with a pillow. And I'm like, I need silence. Yes, um, but I think surviving is is not. Is surviving is good, but thriving is better. You know what I'm saying? So we can always improve on things. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and she wants to say obviously that he's a communicator, and sometimes she wants to smother him. And the reason why she wants to smother him is because she doesn't communicate. I always find people who are not very good communicators are also not very good listeners, and they're also very impatient. Don't get twisted. When it comes to things, they get stuff done. If you want them to get things done, she's probably a red. I'll call it, um, she's probably, a, 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 um, you know, a choleric kind of person. Yeah. She wants to get things done. Yeah. Neat, not, not, now. She's not, a, she's not all about these taking long to do things. Listen, get it done now. I don't want excuses. Get it done. And people like that can be very impatient. Great leaders can be very impatient and they can be in flexible or in, um, can be, uh, avoid, I want to say avoidant, but they can be unaware of the emotional aspect of things because they just want to get things done. Like, what's the solution? Get it done. Let's do it. While we're talking about it, it's too much. And that may be what she's, she's now showing. If you want to know about choleric, that means it's a, it's a, it's a temperament. Okay, the Greeks talk about choleric, um, melancholic, um, sanguine, and, and, and phlegmatic. And cholerics are really great leaders, but they're just so head focus on getting the job, the job done. They can eradicate any emotion and feelings in a situation because they need to get things done. They're task oriented or orientated. Um, and so that's probably what they, what we could be experiencing here with Bill and Christian in that respect. Um, because, you know, um, emotions are part of a relationship. And what she was talking now was just sensing that the reversal of the, the female and the male and the masculine energy. And so in that way, you know, usually it's more the males are like that. I don't, I don't need to talk about everything to death. Like, sometimes we're never going to agree. I tend to feel like... Right? That she's exhibiting that masculine energy as a choleric. You often do, you will often, you know, fall into line with the masculine energy because it's about task orientation, getting the job done. 
right? Nothing wrong with that. It's just that you need to understand it so that when you operate in your relationship, you're able to deal with what's coming your way, okay? Um, and then it's, it, it was funny because she went on to say that, you know, um, Bill is quite a mediator, right? People who are great, great listeners who are in tune with their emotions, probably is an empath, you know, uh, they are um, slow to speak and they look to seek, they look to seek for solutions and look to see the world in a, in a holistic manner are great mediators because they look things from both sides all sides if if anything right where she also makes a point saying listen he needs to be on my side when something's going wrong like that in public you take my side and then after in private you drive me aside. I, I agree that i do agree the fact that in private you tell me etc etc right i tend to feel like he's too lenient or nice or whatever or isn't if he's not on my side about something like that pisses me off to be on like um but when you're a mediator, you sense people's emotions and feelings. So you can't actually just, um, you can't actually just uh, 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 leave it alone as I'm backing you because what you see is a sense of justice. Oh no, I sense the person's emotions. I can't just leave it as it is. Where she sees things, I remember she sees things as what? Black and white because she's a choleric. She sees things, get it done. So when you're not backing me, you're, you're not supporting me, you're not part of the team. You're not really, you're not, you're not, you're not putting us first. Do you understand? And often that times that can also come from the fact you're choleric, but can also come from the fact as a child as well, wanting that sense of loyalty, needing that sense of backing, needing that sense of someone's got my back. I don't care. Just, you always have to be on my team and then we'll discuss it later. You, I always... You understand? You have to have my back. If you if you disagree with me, you're not showing me that you have my back. We're not we're not unison and we're not a team in that particular instance. So I I, I get it. I understand it. I know where it comes from. Um, you know. Um, and so uh, it, it was interesting because obviously later on, um, she was telling her story. She turned to laugh at Bill, but Bill didn't laugh until she turned to laugh, because Bill wasn't laughing. Bill was not laughing until she turned to laugh. And I thought that was quite interesting that they weren't on the same page. Or rather than it was on the same page, um, what she may find funny, he's not finding funny. Counselor, we only, we only went to one session. <laughs> but he was good. And I think we, that's what we needed. But funny. And that's not to say that they're on a, on a bad path. No, that's to say that obviously the way that he flexes is different for how she flexes. Right? I'm sure this has probably been chalk and cheese for a very long time. They've had to work things out over and over again. But it's the way that she started laughing. He was not really laughing until she turned and he started laughing to almost like appease and not embarrass her, right? Um, and then she went on to tell a story about how when he got to uh, a therapist and he talks about how, how it's important you argue, right? And how you fight. But then Bill interrupted and said, it's also about how you listen, which is what my sticky point is coming to now. There's but he was, he was basically saying that how you argue is very important and, and you how know, you listen. You know, the sticky point between Bill and Christian, and I think it's the listening aspect. I think Christian doesn't listen very well. And the reason why I say that is because later on in the thing, she goes um, about the concession that certain things he wants to do, or if he wants to have a car that I think is ridiculous, just have it. I don't care. Like you just have to. But when did you get there, right? Like after to, being beat down for today. eighteen years. And he, he mentioned about concession. That concession doesn't mean losing. You have to understand that concession isn't about losing, okay? And then she wouldn't say, I've only just learnt that after 18 years. He's been dr basically drumming it into me for 18 years. That should let you know this person has not risen. It's been, it's been going, but it's not been going in. You know what I mean? It's been going, but it hasn't been going in. And so it hasn't sunk. And so when he talked about listening, the way he emphasised on listening is as if she doesn't listen as well as she needs to. And maybe, and, and the way he explained it so passionately about listening in a relationship later on, it's, I think, a key indication of the fact that maybe it was a subtle hint towards Kristen as well. What I've learned is that you have to listen. You, you, you just can't just be like, I want a red room. He's actually right about listening. I think the way that Christian says she can cuss, I think that she stops listening at that point. Because if you're a person who cusses, you're not listening. You're not listening. You're trying to win. Do you understand? And people who think like they want to win oftentimes are the ones that are the most scared. Um, because they're trying to win because they need to feel like the person's on their side. They need to feel like the person will understand them. If they win, okay, then, you know, the person can't take advantage of them. 
right? Um, because they see compromise as a loss. Why? Because it means giving up some sense of sovereignty and power. And so when he explains about the listening aspect, I could tell straight away it was eating at Christian. I could tell that it's something that they discussed before. Um, just by the body language and the way she responded to the way he said things. Um, you know, listening is a big, 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 big thing for him, I guess. Maybe because obviously at the same time, the response back to him is that he, he wants to be listened to. And when she spoke about, oh, he smothers me with the talking and, and, and you know, um, all that kind of stuff, I started to realise that goes hand in hand as a communicator. You want to talk and you want to communicate, but for her, because she wants to get things done, she, she sees that as alien, but that also then alienates him from her. Because for him, communicating, talking is a huge part of a relationship, right? Um... And, you know, when she says she finally got it after 18 years, that should let you know how much of a battle it's been to get her to understand. But when did you get there, right? Like After being beat point. down for today. 18 years. Today. <laughs> you know, even joked around and said, obviously, she, she got it today. Bill just sees things on, always on a positive note. And she goes on to say as well, like, she feels like it has rubbed off on her. She's feeling like she's learn in, learning to think almost like Bill now, starting to come into alignment. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it also reminded me as well about patience and relationship that, look, if that they were being serious, half joking, half serious, I think, that it's taken like 18 years to deep that, listen, there's, it's not everything you fight over because the way she said it is as if that previously they fought over most things. And when I say fought, it doesn't mean it has to be a bad argument. It means that she argues for every point. Or if I don't agree, I don't agree, I don't agree, I don't agree, I don't agree. And I'm not going to give up those points, right? But it sounded like she got to a point where she realised sometimes you must concede ground to win the war. If every time you want to fight every battle, you will lose the war. You know what I'm saying? And so when Bill explains relations in a basketball sense uh, about being a team, I really love that. And I said again, he's thinking about not just himself, but he's thinking about the team, the collective. And how do I make sure the collective is okay? But make sure we look after the team. Um, so yeah, guys, um, I don't know how you felt about that. Please let us know your thoughts down below. Click on the bell button for the notification of the uploads. And we appreciate you. Stay locked, stay loaded. More love. Do I have trauma in that context? Yes. Am I living a life in context of that trauma? I'd say no. I don't think I'm living a life and I'm being hindered or functioning or making decisions based on the potential. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. I still live life and I make decisions out of the abundance of the love and the emotion and how I organically mm. generally feel in that moment. Mm. Is that to say that there may be some subconscious barriers that may be up that sometimes I don't even realise, mm. I'll be honest. Possibly. They're probably there. 120%. Mm. Like one of my friends said to me, Tim, let's just face facts, you've got trust issues. I say, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Man came out of the booth like, you got trust issues, Tim. <laughs> trust issues. Like, how you going to just 